the area. So if you go into the opponent's uh, red sectors, yep, that captain will not give any bonuses whatsoever. Now, at Veteran C1, the captain actually gives um, you know, decreased suppression, decreased damage, health regen, also increases the maximum health of emplacements it's um, standing next to. So this emplacement over here will get some maximum health. Um, at Veteran C2, it gives, um, let's see, for example, decreased suppression. Um, what else does it give? Decreased regen, more max health for infantry emplacements. Um, and yeah pretty much that and also at, vec at veteran c3 uh there's something very interesting as well for the captain um at veteran c3 they increase the sector income so as i've been saying the captain only works in the friendly sector sectors that he's in so whatever sector that he's in he's actually going to increase the income of that sector so quite interesting and that is at veteran c3 by the way so yep, yeah, so just some things you got to be aware of. Now, veteran seas are very important for any faction that you're playing. So you always got to be on top of what these um, veteran seas do, just so you can optimize your gameplay. Now, the Vermox are trying to respond to all these, all this infantry by building Ostwinds. Now, if this was a bit more experienced Vermox player, they would be fully aware that by now, this is not a heavy orientated infantry strategy they should be totally aware that more tanks will be coming out more likely heavy tanks such as fireflies cromwells and maybe a Ostwind wouldn't be the best without some more anti-tanks so it's good that at least he's bringing the stormtroopers to back up this Ostwind so that's very good um, but as for what will happen next we will have to see now I believe there's a armor command truck coming about and yes there is here is the big armor command bus going to put itself down and I believe it's probably this fuel sector just to optimize its fuel income and get out more tanks so very good decisions by Wallalo in putting um, just exactly where this uh, tank should be and just optimizing his uh, income and funnily enough I actually believe he might put it down over on this munitions point and let's actually see let's actually see uh, his income and funnily enough Yes, he's actually putting on the mu uh, munitions. So, as you guys can see, he's got plus 49 on the fuel and loads of fuel right now already. So, he does actually not need to optimize on any more fuel income because he has enough. So, that'll be okay. So, he's actually going to put it down on that munitions and just bring in more. So, very cool. And so, as you guys can see, that artillery coming down, putting a few craters, blowing a few big holes into this house taking a whole bunch of damage on Bars, and Bars being totally aware that he needs to try and repair this Ostwin before it's taken out, but quite a passive and slow game right now. I'm actually going to speed this up because, yeah, as I've said, this is quite a slow game at the moment. His Bofors will really not do that much damage to the Ostwin, um, unless it hits, hits it in its back. Ostwin would be actually very good at taking out the Bofors as long as its front arm was facing towards it, but no, here we go, the first Cromwell coming out and taking out that Ostwind. Now, quite interesting stuff. So, Wallalo is totally capitalizing on his um, his veterancy bonuses. So he's got, at the moment, a lieutenant and a captain. And I believe what he will also be doing is taking, getting a command, tr uh, command tank as well to get veterancy bonuses for his tanks as well. Now, really got to get this uh, Kromo out of here. He's speeding away just because there's stormtroopers here and you know anti-tank panzer shreks not a good friend of tanks whatsoever so just has to get out of there and so if we just keep on seeing what is happening speed this up a bit more because it's still quite passive here we go I believe some something was taken out there probably maybe a lieutenant or, com or a captain something was taken out there quite unfortunate loss for Wallala but trying to just regain his um, stance on the field. Wallala still has a majority of the map right now. So as you guys can see, it's actually very hard to cut off a Brit player from or um, take them or take any points from them and deprive them of income because I mean they could just move their base around. So it's quite hard to do. So what right now, Bar's just thinking, okay, I'm gonna go for heavy tanks, and I'm going to hopefully with my heavy tanks and my mixture of stormtroopers and Ostwinds, I'm going to take out the Brit. 
but unfortunately Wolo is really putting on the pressure. I mean, as soon as he sees an opportunity to throw down some artillery, he really does take that chance. Um, and But funnily enough, Wolo is actually just totally recognizing that there's quite a few tanks on the field. A Cromwell might not be enough, so he's responding to this with a Sapper squad. Sapper is having those PSR do very, very exceptional damage against tanks, being being uh, quite a different sort of AT as well. I mean, usually these bazookas, like the bazooka and the panel track, they fire straight, but the PS actually go in a sort of rainbow fashion. They go in a curved sort of lob, and they can actually be funnily enough shot over hedges and shot over a variety of objects. So quite an interesting sort of um, AT. Unfortunately, losing that Sapper squad, he shouldn't have done that. Uh, it's quite a big loss considering how much they cost and upgrading that Piat squad as well. Unfortunately, losing another sort of uh, another uh, officer as well. So Wololo, uh, our bars actually is just moving in on where the the previous base of uh, the Brits was, just taking out the emplacements over there, probably just to put a little hassle, just make uh, just make his uh, signature on the map, so to say, and just start uh, taking the points on the left hand side since there really is not that much covering this side of the map for the uh, Brits. So the Brits realizing that there's quite a few tanks on the field, building their own fireflies and chromas and also having a command truck, uh, command tank out. And now I'm going to talk about the bonuses about the command tank. So I have done the bonuses about the lieutenant and the, com and the captain. So here we go with a command tank. So a veteran C1, the command tank will be giving a sight radius bonus, a weapon reload bonus, and a weapon range bonus. And that is the same at veteran C2. But the funny thing about the command tank is that despite getting any bo or veteran C, uh, veteran C1, 2, or 3, it actually does not get any bonuses for itself. So it won't uh, survive longer or anything like that. It only gives bonuses for other tanks unlike the lieutenant and the captains which actually get bonuses for themselves as well and so bars just trying to really capitalize on these stormtroopers just trying to make them effective but these this artillery totally being hassling just random shots being able to take out some of these uh, stormtroopers but really need to get out of there too many craters and too much infantry looking quite bad now, I'm not sure why Bard is bringing out this damage off and really should not be doing that. But here we go, one pack on the field, just being the only anti-tank at the moment. Got to rotate and try and take out this Cromwell. So here we have two Ostwin losses, unfortunately. One Cromwell loss, this Sherman Firefly just trying to outmaneuver the pack and this artillery trying to take it out. Will it be able to take it out? Uh, Firefly just trying to get away. But the rotation speed on the on the pack is just a bit too slow. Can I get away? Well, Lolo, you really need to try and get that away. And yes, he has tried. I've actually realized to yes, get that away. And that pack being taken out. Now, if you look at the commander abilities, Wolo has gone for a priest, so that means he has gone for a rogue Canadian artillery support doctrine. So that means he's going to be focusing a lot on his artillery and funnily enough I actually like that because this artillery as you guys can see provides a lot of hassle so as long as he can maintain a strong infantry and tank base this artillery is really going to be good support as his doctrine um, suggests um, so he's going to get some priests out to support these uh, 25 pound howitzers. now there's some funny things about the priests the priests actually they cost a bit more 625 um, manpower. They cost a bit more than the uh, 25 power pounder howitzer emplacements, but they actually do, I believe, 40% more damage uh, when it comes to their shells. So quite an interesting thing. So you pay a little bit more, 125 uh, manpower, I believe, but you get a big damage bonus. So yeah, pretty cool trade-off, I would say. <laughs> and here we go, a little panther on the field right now. Unfortunately, being a bit too bold, taking a few extra shots from um, this 17 pounder AT gun, being very too bold now. Just about taken out, no veterancy, and here we go, this Firefly just coming in for the kill. Will it be able to do it? Yes, it will. Plus 39 XP for that Firefly. 
very interesting. Now, if that command tank was nearby, then he could get um, veteran C for that command tank, but I do not believe it was, so unfortunately that extra XP going a bit to waste there. Now, if I was the Vermoct right now, I would definitely go for what he's doing right now with his stormtroopers, and I like his Ostwins as well. Um, but what he's really lacking in at the moment is veterancy. Now, the only veterancy that I believe that I'm aware of is that he has veterancy one for his pioneers um, and for his infantry. But to be honest, I'm not exactly sure if that's the best thing to do right now. I mean, he's got a mixture of tanks, he's got a mixture of stormtroopers. What he really needs to focus in, focus on, is the um, veterancy for the stormtroopers or the veterancy for the Ostwins. So for your tanks, because anything that is not um, upgraded with veterancy is very, very susceptible to dying um, quickly, especially in the late game. And this would be the late game since everything is pretty much out. So this is basically just all of Bar's forces right now on the field. Wallala, being the ambitious warlord he is, thinks maybe I'll go and try and take that on. Throwing down, what is that? A bit of artillery. Here we go. Craters everywhere, just putting the pressure on bars. Just chasing him away from this, from his uh, previous home base sector. And Firefly is coming in for a cutoff. Unfortunately, not chasing down. And yes, here we go. It is chasing down. Overrepaired Firefly, should I say about that? So as you guys can see, just a bit of extra um, HP. So, very interesting, and here we go, a Tiger Tank from the Blitzkrieg Doctrine. Well, uh, being totally aware of that and being quite afraid, trying to back up everything. What you could really use right now is probably a bit of buttoning, a bit of sappers, um, Cromwells and Sherman Fireflies to hit the rear armor to try and take that out. But Bars obviously being aware of this enclosing um, infantry section, just really needs to get out of there, and he was doing that just so that he didn't get buttoned by those friends. And just a bit more artillery coming down. And all is quiet. <laughs> so speed this up even more. If you guys haven't noticed, this was actually ready on um, two times speed. So yeah, as I said, quite a passive game. Um, but what Lot is definitely playing a very good uh, game as the Brits right now. Very good mixture of uh, units and he definitely has a solid plan on his um, build order and so this Austin going down from a button this uh, infantry squad unfortunately being taken out but the artillery is upon bars right now very uh, bad position for bars he has absolutely nothing to counter all this artillery and here you guys go maybe not the best front to be playing on as uh, 